Pinky Tails Slumberjack There once was an earth pony kingdom called Appalestria. The ponies who inhabited this kingdom had one sole purpose, to grow and sell apples, which they would then trade for other resources with neighboring kingdoms. It was ruled by a benevolent king and a kind-hearted queen, who longed for nothing more than to have a child of their own. At last, the blessed day arrived when they welcomed a healthy, beautiful, golden-maned orange fur baby filly into the world, a filly that they had named Appalora. Ma? Pa? Pinky, how did you... Wait. You know, every time I get roped into these things, I keep thinking, there's no way it could possibly get more embarrassing. Pinky, you truly astound me with your ability to prove me wrong. I think you meant to say goo goo gaga. That's crossing the line! It was custom in those days for the birth of a royal foal to be blessed with gifts from neighboring kingdoms. Gifts that were delivered by those kingdoms invited ambassadors. It was also customary for their own ambassador to accompany the others so that each type of pony would be equally represented. Presenting Floretti, ambassador to the Unicorn Kingdom, Fabulosity. One of the heralding trumpeters announced, Floretti was a striking white unicorn with a deep purple mane, expertly styled around the traditional ambassador hat, customary to her profession. Her hat, however, had a touch of her unique style, adding gemstones, ribbons, and lace. She walked with her head held high, and a confident, though slightly distasteful, expression on her face. She approached the king and queen and bowed. They returned the gesture. Presenting Fonishai, ambassador to the Pegasus Kingdom, Weathersby. The ambassador timidly poked her head out from behind the doors and gulped, little beads of sweat forming on her brow as she gauged how many pairs of eyes were on her. She whimpered and took a shaky step into the doorway, keeping her eyes cast downward. You can do it, Fonishai! A third voice called from behind her. Yes, but do worry, we haven't got all day. Uh-oh. Sorry, of course. Fauna Shai said, timidly walking forward. She was a yellow pegasus with a long, pink flowing mane, and she too had the traditional ambassador hat, though hers was only accentuated with a single flower. She quickly made her way down to the carpet to bow to the king and queen. It's about time, Floretti said through gritted teeth. Presenting Mary Pie, Ambassador to- Hello, Appalestria! <laughs> Silly Mr. Harold Trumpet Stallion, every pony knows who I am. I'm Appalestria's ambassador, duh. Besides, I'm almost positive I'm related to the apples. Way, 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 way back in my family tree. I mean, my family apple tree. <laughs> I love a good pun. The herald rolled his eyes and played the procession for Mary Pie while she bounced down the carpet, waving and talking to various members of the crowd that she appeared to know personally. Mary Pie was a vivacious pink earth pony with a bouncy pink mane. Her ambassador hat looked more like something you would find at a foal's birthday party, with streamers and polka dots. She bowed to the royal family and joined the other ambassadors with a big smile on her face. Must you make a complete fool yourself? You are representing a noble and dignified profession, Mary Pie! Floretti spat angrily, causing Faunashai to take a few nervous steps away from her. Whoa! Some pony woke up on a grumpy side of the bed today! Come on, Floretti! Let's see a smile! This is a happy day! We're having a party to celebrate the birth of this little baby filly! Who's definitely a baby and not a grown mare? How absurd! Of course she is a baby! Why make such outlandish statements that are obvious to any pony? Floretti whispered, just loud enough for the other ambassadors to hear. Mary Pie's ears drooped, and she stood quietly next to Faunashai, who put a hoof on her back with a smile to comfort her. Thank you very much for coming today. 
the queen said with a warm smile. We will be honored by any gifts you have brought us on this momentous occasion, the king added. <gasps> oh yeah, the gifts! Oh, oh, me first, me first! Mary Pie shouted, bouncing up to Apollora's crib, which was far too small for the infant it held. Exactly how long do I have to be a baby pink Mary Pie? This is a mite uncomfortable. <laughs> Apollora sure is a talkative little thing, isn't she? It's almost like she thinks she's saying real words. Gitchi <gasps> gitchi goo! Mary Pie said, reaching to tickle the baby's belly. Apollora swatted her hoof away. Don't even think about it. We're way past the line, Pinkie Pie. Dearest Apollora, I come with a gift from your own kingdom. A gift without which we Earth Ponies would be lost. In fact, it's in our name. I bring you Earth, or more specifically, Mud. Mary Pie said, dropping a large hoofful of mud onto Apollora, who screamed out in surprise and sputtered out the mud that had gotten in her mouth. Are you kidding me? But not just any mud, it's magical mud. This mud is going to help you grow up big and strong. You're welcome. How thoughtful. How disgusting. Your turn, Fawnishai. Mary said, bouncing away while Apollora attempted to clean herself. Sweet little filly, I come bearing a gift from my king. Fawnishai said, pulling a small tuft of cloud out from under her wing. It hovered in the air beside her. What? How does she do that? It just came out of nowhere. Mary Pie said in awe, pulling a bag of popcorn from her mane and offering Flority a bite. Want some? So, does... The cloud do anything special? <laughs> Apollora started, but was cut short when the little cloud created a bolt of lightning that sent a wave of electricity through Apollora. Oh no! It wasn't supposed to hurt her! It was supposed to bless her with speed and agility! I had no idea it would do that! Please, please forgive me, Apollora! Are you alright? I'd say she was pretty shocked too, Fanashai! <laughs> Mary Pie said, to which the room groaned in disapproval of the bad pun. Before Fawnishai kills a little filly, I'll bestow upon her my gift. Flority said, taking Apollora from a distraught Fawnishai's hooves with her magic and levitating her in the air. But before we get to that, I must say there is a rather troubling problem with the dignitaries present to bless the foal. Specifically, the exclusion of another kingdom from this celebration. Earth Pegasi Unicorn. Who was that? Oh, I know! Alicorns! Alicorns? Oh, right! This is before Equestria, so there probably aren't any. Hmm. Well, I'm stumped. But all the pony ambassadors are present. Who could we have forgotten? A noble kingdom, just as worthy of your attention and praise, but yet denied it. A kingdom ignored and shunned by you ponies for far too long. I do indeed have a gift for this foal. A gift to teach you pathetic ponies the consequences of your boorish actions and behaviors. My gift is a curse. Before this foal turns 16 years old, she shall choke on an apple seed and die. Sounds like some pony needs a hug. The room erupted in gasps and shouts of concern. The king, queen, ambassadors, and crowd watched helplessly as the foal was briefly engulfed in dark magic before falling back onto her crib. You know, with all that monologuing she did, ya ponies had plenty of time to stop her. Just saying. Flority <laughs> laughed evilly, her sweet dulcet tones morphing into deranged and deep laughter. Soon, the Flority disguise she had been hiding behind melted to reveal the queen of changelings herself, as dark and malevolent as all ponies had come to know her under kind. The crowd trembled in fear as the changeling queen descended. Look upon me, you pathetic ponies, and remember the day that you- Pinkie Pie? What, what did Equestria are you doing? Oh, it's funny you should ask. See, I realized that I always play the same character in these stories. And sometimes that can get kind of boring, so I swapped. You, you what? I switched places with Chrissy, duh. I want to be the bad guy for once. <laughs> Seems like a really fun role to play. 
So that means she's... Uh-huh. She's going to be the Earth Pony Ambassador from now on. More specifically, she'll be the bubbly, fun-loving, party-throwing Mary Pie character. That's, um... I don't know about that, Pinky. I mean, she's still Chrysalis. Don't worry, narrator. Chrissy can't break the fourth wall. No pony will ever even know. Now, if you don't mind, I have to finish my evil plot monologue, since that's what all the good villains do. Look upon me, you pathetic ponies, and remember the day that you spurned the wrong kingdom. Let this be a warning to all that no pony, earth, pegasi, or unicorn will be safe from the wrath of the changelings. <laughs> it's Maleficent, queen of the changelings. Seize her! The king shouted, drawing his sword and rallying his soldiers to ready for an attack. She merely scoffed and engulfed herself in... Pink, I guess, disappearing from the throne room before any pony could lay a hoof on her. Wait, so Pinky is the bad guy and the ambassador? Ah! Appalora shouted when she saw Fauna Shy and Mary Pie standing beside her crib, looking down at her sympathetically. Oh, now that's just wrong. Pinky Pie, what did you do? Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you, AJ. I swapped characters with Chrysalis. So I'm her and she's me. All right. Now we can get back to the story! Aw, poor little thing! Mary Pie said, reaching out to comfort Apollora. No, 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 no! I'm calm! Totally calm! Don't touch me! Apollora said, scooting away from Mary Pie's grasp. The queen trotted to her daughter's side to calm her. My poor darling! There must be something we can do! A counter curse or a remedy! Something! Anything! The room went silent, no pony knowing the answer to the desperate mother's plea, and fearing the worst on behalf of the princess. When they did so, a faint muffled sound could be heard from somewhere outside the throne room. Does any pony else hear that? It sounds like it's coming from <gasps> over there! Guards! The king said, pointing in the direction that Mary Pie had indicated. Moments later, the guards appeared again, helping the real Ambassador Flority remove the gag and ropes that bound her. That bootish devil bear tied me up and took my place! I gonna do a thing to stop her! Flority! Mary Pie exclaimed, bouncing towards her friend and hugging her tightly. How awful! Fonashai said, joining Mary Pie in an embrace. Worst of all, she stole my one-of-a-kind bejeweled ambassador hat! I'll never be able to replace all these so exquisite! Don't worry, Flority. Maleficent has left your hat behind. She didn't want it after all. She didn't? Well, why not? Fair Flority, can your unicorn magic or the magic of your kingdom spare our filly from such a terrible fate? The queen asked, fighting back tears as she pulled Apollora in her hooves, holding her close. The king joined in their embrace, failing to fight back the sadness in his expression. Apollora's eyes too filled with tears, though not for her cursed circumstances. She snuggled into her parents, relishing being close to them again. This story is such a strange combination of funny and sad! I don't know what to feel! <sighs> Neither, actually. You're the villain now, so such displays of affection should probably repulse you. Okie dokie dokie! Ew, a tender moment! Preceded and followed by jokes and puns. How repulsive! Ha! I've got this villain thing down. Now I just need to find a clumsy yet likable hench pony. I suppose it doesn't matter what gift I had originally planned to give. Now I must clean up the mess left by that wretched mare. Sorry, Apollora. You'll just have to grow up without the gifts of elegance and grace. I'll live. And she can't have both because... I mean, who's making up these rules? I should point out, however, that unicorn magic and changeling magic are vastly different. So I might not be able to counter the curse, but I can soften it. Darling Apollora, you shall not perish when you choke upon that seed. But instead, beauty sleep, you will only awaken from this number by true love's kiss. And, just in case that takes a while, the rest of your castle and the ponies inside will slumber too. 
frozen in time, awaiting that glorious day. That way, she'll be curse-free. You won't have to wait and worry about when that will happen. And she'll have found the proper prince. Quite brilliant, don't you agree? Flority said with a smile. The king looked to the queen, and they nodded in approval and relief. But the ambassador still saw grief and fear in their eyes. Hmm, kissing a stranger or choking on an apple seed? I honestly don't know which is worse. Apollora muttered. For the kingdom's sake, the king and queen continued the celebration as planned refusing to let Maleficus's curse ruin the festivities. However, when the day ended and the pony guests had left, the royal couple asked a favor of the three ambassadors. They were grateful for Flority's alteration of the spell, but would rather spare their daughter from the curse altogether. They knew that in a kingdom comprised of apples and apple accessories, that Apollora would never truly be safe. They appealed to the three ambassadors to take Apollora with them, to raise her somewhere far from her kingdom until her 16th birthday had passed, the ambassadors were touched by their plea and agreed. They fled the castle by moonlight, while Apollora and her parents watched with heavy hearts as the distance between them grew until they were out of sight. The three ambassadors traveled many miles until they came upon an old abandoned cottage in the woods between kingdoms. This shall do nicely, Flority said with a smile, opening the door that then broke from its rusted hinges and landed on the floor. It just needs a little straightening up is all. Fanshai entered the cottage, pushing Apollora in a too small baby carriage. She accidentally flapped her wings, causing the piles of dust resting on the old furniture to whirl around in the air, making all four ponies cough. Oh, sorry. All right, a lot of stringing up. Flority amended, setting Apollora gently down on an old bed with her magic. I have an idea. Fanshai, you like animals, right? Maybe you could get a few of them to help us clean the place up? Wrong story, Mary Pie. Cleaning is the least of our problems, Phillies. We have far more pressing matters to attend to. We are living between Earth Pony Kingdoms, and Maleficent is sure to find us once the villagers spread the rumor that two Earth Ponies are living harmoniously with a Pegasus and a Unicorn. We will have to blend in. As much as I hate to admit it, I will have to refrain from using magic and conceal my horn from others. Fonashai, you must hide your wings. What about me? You're an earth pony already, darling. You don't need to hide your horn and wings. Solid logic there, Flority. Okie dokie loki. Ooh, now let's name the little filly. You know, because everyone will know the princess is named Apollora. She needs a new name. So what will we call her instead? She's such a little angel. Maybe we can call her that. We could call her Emerald for her lovely eyes. Or Amber like her fur. Although I'm more fond of the name Opal. I know! Let's call her Gummy! Mary Pie said joyously, then noted the confused looks on the other ambassadors' faces. You know, because she doesn't have teeth yet? <laughs> yes. Well, we simply must agree on something! We can't leave her without a name! <gasps> where is she? Flirty panicked, seeing the bed where she had placed the filly was now empty. All three ambassadors immediately began searching around the room. Apollora was not too far away, sweeping up the piles of dust on the floor with a broom she had found. You didn't expect me to just lay around when there was work to be done, did you? Apollora asked, undeterred from her work. The ambassadors sighed in relief, and Fanishai scooped Apollora into her hooves. Aw, how sweet! She's playing with a broom. She wants to help clean up, don't you, you little sweeping beauty, you? <laughs> This joke is getting old, Pinkie Pie! Mary Pie? That's it! That's what we'll call her! Beauty! Oh, I love that name! Alright, they named me. Pinkie Pie... Malefi... something! Yes? Have you been here all along? Uh-huh. It's not hard to figure out that three ponies pushing a baby carriage are trying to sneak away with the princess. What do I look like? An idiot? You know, I'm not going to answer that. Is that... Is that Winona? Now she's Win Corona. Get it? Because Maleficent's pet is a crow. She's my wacky yet lovable sidekick. Plus, she's a really good tracker. I didn't even have to try and follow you four closely when Corona picked up your scent. <sighs> All right, fine. 
Can we please just move past this baby phase of the story? That joke is well past its prime. Oh, sure thing, beauty. <laughs> Time skip. Flority, Faunashai, and Mary Pie spent the next 16 years raising and caring for Beauty as if she was their own, pretending to be her three aunts. They kept a very close eye on Apollora, whom they named Beauty, and she grew to be swift, strong, and a hard worker. Beauty kept the cottage clean and cared for herself and her aunts. In her 16 years, regardless of her cutie mark, she never tasted an apple. On her 16th birthday, the ambassadors wanted to celebrate it with a surprise party. Rather than keeping her locked safe in the house for one more day, or pretending the day after was her birthday for her own safety, they decided to send her out into the forest alone to pick some cherries. It didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what they were doing, but Apollora pretended to be clueless and went along the forest path with a single empty basket. When she came upon the cherry trees, she set it down and bucked the trunk. Soon after, a cascade of cherries fell directly into her basket. She walked to the next cherry tree and bucked again, but something much bigger than the cherries was shaken loose from the treetop. A blue pegasus with a rainbow mane came tumbling to the ground, landing directly on Beauty's basket, squashing the cherries she had gathered. Of course. Of course, it's R.D. You know, there are a lot of male characters out there that haven't been in these stories yet. That's the joke? It's comedy, AJ! You're supposed to laugh! Ha. Ha. Hey! I was taking a nap up there! Why'd ya? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hello there. The name's R.D. What's yours? If your name's R.D., why do you have an A on your satchel? A-R-D-E-E. -E. Huh, that's me. But you still haven't told me your name, beautiful. Apple or beauty? Beauty. <laughs> I can't keep these things straight. Apple or beauty, beauty, huh? That first part almost sounded like Apollora. You know, that long lost princess of Appalestria? And how would you know that? I, uh... Uh, no reason? Uh, not because I'm a prince or anything looking to find true love. You haven't seen or heard of any pony named Apollora, have you? Uh, the better question is, what's a Pegasus doing nap in an Earth Pony territory anyway? True love doesn't know one pony type from another. Plus, I couldn't find a certain special some pony as a Pegasus. I mean, there was this one, but she couldn't keep track of her glass shoes. And then there was another pony who was half a fish. Ugh. But, but still, something's missing. I figured that tracking down a long-lost princess would be a challenge, and maybe she could be the one. Though, <laughs> though I doubt she'd be as pretty as you. Well, you're an improvement from Darling Dash, so that's something. You know, I heard this Apollora isn't going to be around for another day, but by then she'll probably show up at the castle, so your quest won't be too long. Apollora said, dumping the ruined cherries from her basket. Well, that's the problem. There's no challenge in that. I have to find her today. Otherwise, what's the point? Beauty smiled but rolled her eyes. She bucked another cherry tree and Artie followed. I got pony I've met who actually knows anything about this mysterious princess. Huh. Why don't you and I team up to find her? And why would I want to do that? Got anything better to do? Mm, good point. Alright, R.D. I'll be honest with you. I am Apollora. So I guess that means your quest was fruitful after all. <laughs> you see that, Pinky? I can pun too. Not bad. Not great, but you'll get there. You're Apollora? But you're on the border of the Kingdom of Cherriesburg. And yet, my cutie mark says otherwise. Beauty said, showing Artie the trio of apples on her flank. Doesn't really make sense since I haven't eaten an apple in my life, but I suppose that's just story convenience. Well, can't argue with that. All right then, let's get you back to the castle. No, wait, that evil changing queen might find you before the sun sets. <laughs> Huh? What's that? Don't mind that. That's just some pony trying to ruin the plot. We could hide in the Pegasus Kingdom. She'd never find you there. Or in my cottage, since it's about two miles that way. Oh, yeah. That works, too. Race ya! Artie said, taking off in flight. Apollora smirked and raced after Artie on hoof. 
Meanwhile, at the cottage, the three ambassadors are scrambling to get ready for Apollora's party. They plan to clean the cottage, bake a cake, and sew a gown for Apollora that she would wear to meet her real parents as a princess. Although it seemed logical for certain ambassadors to do certain tasks, they had other ideas. Ooh, ooh, I want to try sewing! <laughs> Mary Pie said, plopping herself down in front of Flority's sewing supplies. I wouldn't mind trying to bake a cake. It can't be too difficult, right? Which leaves me to clean. Easy enough. Flority said, walking to the broom closet. Fanishai pulled Mary Pie's recipe book from the cabinet and placed it gently on the countertop. Her little woodland critter friend started flocking to the window, so she opened it and let them in. Oh, hello, little friends. Would you like to help me bake a cake for beauty? She asked, to which the critters excitedly chirped and squeaked their reply. I need flour, milk, eggs, sugar, vanilla, and butter. The last ingredient had an ink smudge, and Fanishai squinted, trying to decipher it. I think it says powder? Fanishai said, and her forest friends went off in search. But what kind of powder? Maybe I should ask some pony. Fanishai said, just as Flority walked past. Oh, Flority, do you know if we have any powder? Oh, don't be silly, Fanishai. Of course I have makeup powder. It's a lifesaver. Do you need some? Yes, please. Up the stairs in the cabinet, darling. After a few minutes of searching, Fanishai and her friends had gathered their ingredients and were ready to start baking. However, Fanishai had failed to realize that woodland critters had never baked before and weren't familiar with traditional ingredients. The squirrels had brought two and a half bluebird egg shells that they had borrowed from the bluebirds. The deer brought rocks covered in lichen. The chipmunks brought acorns. The sparrows brought worms. The rabbits brought dandelions, and the bear brought an entire beehive. Fanishai trusted their choices because she knew as much about ingredients and baking as they did. She tenderly dumped a spoonful of makeup powder on top and placed the wooden spoon in the bowl to stir. Meanwhile, Mary Pie had found a bright neon pink dress fabric that appealed to her, and she had wrapped it around her body in a way that she presumed a dress would fit. It draped around her neck, covered her flank, and wove in and out of the holes in her legs, binding them together. She then used her Earth Pony magic from her Earth Pony horn to sew the fabric in place with a small needle and thread. Oh, beauty is gonna be even more beautiful in this! You know, it's a good thing she's the same size as the rest of us ponies, am I right? The others didn't respond. Bonashai was trying to put her bowl of ingredients into the oven, and Flority was busy with a challenge of her own. Flority looked utterly miserable and covered in dirt and dust. She refused to hold a broom or feather duster in her mouth, so instead tried to use them with her hooves, leading to disastrous results. At that moment, she was reaching with a feather duster in her hoof to clean the top of the mantle above the fireplace. She leaned forward in her pursuit, which caused her to fall face first into the unlit fireplace. It's everywhere! No matter where I turn, dirt! Dirt! Nasty, dirty dirt! I'll never be clean again! Apollora and Artie came bursting through the door at the sound of Florida's cries. What in the hay is going on here? Whoa, looks like a storm hit this place. On the inside. <laughs> I win, by the way. Artie said, helping Florida to her hooves. Yes, here? Not what I look like this. Aw, but I wasn't ready yet. I still need to finish your dress. Hmm. Is that a dress or a straitjacket? These ponies raised you? How are you even alive? Artie, go outside and keep watch for Maleficus while I help my uh, ants clean this place up. You got it! Artie said, zipping out the window to keep guard. Ooh, who's your friend, beauty? Mary Pie asked as Apollora took the end piece of fabric in her mouth and pulled as hard as she was able. Mary Pie spun around in a whirlwind of fabric before landing on her flank, looking dazed and dizzy. Let's do that again. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's R.D. He is uh, a prince from a Pegasus Kingdom. Oh, how fortuitous! A prince is exactly the kind of special sound pony I had in mind for you all along. Perhaps he is the one! I thought only princesses could marry princes. Does this mean that you are finally telling me I'm Princess Apollora? The three ambassadors stopped what they were doing and gasped <gasps> in surprise. How did you know? I found it in Mary Pie's scrapbook, Apollora said, holding open the book for the other ambassadors to see. 
On the page before her was an image of the three ambassadors meeting her as an infant with Mary Pie's hoof riding in pink saying, The first day we met Apollora. The next page saying, First day raising her is beauty. Flority and Faunashai looked over at Mary Pie with unamused expressions. What? I had to preserve our memories. Well then, since the cat is out of the bag, we might as well take you back to your castle. What? Why? Wouldn't that just make it easier for Maleficent to find me? She knows about Maleficus too? Apollora turned back a page in the scrapbook to show an image of Maleficus revealing herself in a cloud of smoke with a shocked Mary Pie in the corner, as if she were pointing the camera at herself when the picture was taken. Oh, why would you want to preserve that moment? Oh, when I put together a scrapbook, I'm thorough. You had a camera? Regardless, we have no choice but to take you to the castle. After all, Nothing here is suitable royal attire. But- No buts! A princess would not protest! Besides, your own castle would be the last place Maleficent would look. It's so obvious that it's too obvious. Alright, fine. You win. Any sign of her, Artie? Apollora called outside. Artie came flying back in, shaking her head. Nope, not yet. Probably too scared of the possibility of going up against me. Let's get a move on before she finds us. Trust me, that pony ain't never too far away. Apollora said, ushering the others outside quickly to take the less traveled path to the castle. With Artie keeping a close eye on the sky and Apollora watching the trees, the group of ponies made it safely to the castle without so much as a hint that Maleficent was nearby. They entered the castle from a secret back entrance so as not to alert any pony to their presence. Surprisingly, it didn't take long to find Apollora's room. The five ponies entered, and Apollora took a look around in bewilderment. Everything was decorated with apples. The colors of the room were based off apples, and there wasn't a single step you could take without inhaling a pungent apple scent. It's a good thing my cutie mark is apples. I'd hate to have something else there. Celestia forbid the off chance I didn't like them. <laughs> yeah, that ought to be tough. Artie said, her cheeks full of apple slices and her hooves full of various apples. Oh no! Get those out of your woods! Flority said, exposing her horn for the first time in 16 years and using her magic to teleport them away. What? What's wrong? Oh, right! That curse. Yeah, that does kind of suck. Those were super delicious. Thanks for that. But tomorrow you can eat as many as you want. And you'll get to see your parents again. Now, let's see if there is something suitable in your closet to wear. Hmm. I suppose this one will have to do. Though it is rather plain for a princess. Flority said. Her comment made no sense to Apollora, who thought the gemstone embellishes and shimmering fabric was plenty princessy. Go on, darling, put it on! We'll be right outside waiting for you! Flority said, pushing the other ambassadors out the door. Artie followed for a moment before doubling back when she caught sight of an apple Flority's magic had missed. She scooped it up off the ground to keep it away from Apollora. Sorry, I almost missed this one. Also, is it just me, or is it weird that your pretend ants want every pony out of the room? Isn't that, like, more dangerous to leave you alone? <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth, R.D. Artie smirked and pounced on the bed, laying on her back and adjusting the pillows to best suit her. She took the apple she'd found and cut off a slice using a knife from her satchel. Do you have to do that so close? It's been forever since I've had one, literally, and the smell in this room is already driving me crazy. Sorry, Apollora. There's a reason why this kingdom's known for its apples. I couldn't just let it go to waste. Not every slice of apple is going to have a seed in it. You're being a bit paranoid. You just want me to cut you a seedless slice? Apollora's ears perked up, and she walked out from behind the changing curtain in her new dress. She narrowed her eyes at Artie and thought back to some of the things she had said. It wasn't like Artie to point out plot holes, nor was it like her to tempt her with a bite knowing the curse was still intact. Concern it, Pinkie Pie. What have you done with R.D.? What? <laughs> no, no. Who, who's Pinkie Pie? Cut the act, Maleficent. I know it's you. How does switching roles with Chrysalis give you changeling powers? R.D.'s face melted into a scowl. She growled. <laughs> and in a bright burst of pink smoke, her disguise was gone, revealing that she was indeed Maleficent. How'd you know? Pouring out plot holes. Shoot! I can't help it. When something ridiculous happens, I just have to let ponies know. 
That's part of Pinky Tails. Look, just eat this apple already, will ya? I've only got ten more minutes. Not my fault you procrastinated till the last day. I'm just doing what the movie did. I think it creates tension or suspense or something. No one wants to watch a story where Applelora's curse comes true when she's still a baby. Just eat it! Nice try, but you aren't gonna get me so easily. Just because the others play along with your crazy stories doesn't mean I have to. Oh, really? Not to mention the fact that I don't think any pony could choke on something so small. Yeah. It's practically impossible. Exactly. Couldn't you have just left it as touching a spindle? Uh -huh. Did you all have to make it apple related? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> See, the thing is, Applora, these are called pinky tails, not apple tails, which means whatever I say goes. And it just so happens that I'm the villain this time. So I guess what I'm trying to say is... Don't mess with the fourth wall breaking villain! My work here is done! The ambassadors outside heard Applora coughing and sputtering and burst open the door in panic. By the time they found her, Maleficus was gone, and the deed was done. Oh no! The curse! I never should have left her alone! Wait, but if the curse worked, shouldn't we be... Mary Pie said, before collapsing on the floor asleep. The other ambassadors didn't have a chance to react, as they too fell to the ground in slumber. Like a shockwave, Floridy's revised curse's power spread to all the inhabitants of the castle, including the staff, nobility, the knights, and the king and queen. Applora laid on her bed in a deep slumber. Not a uh, sure how I'm awake, but here I am. Pinky's so-called powers can't affect the self-aware, apparently. Something to do with that wall she keeps mentioning. Regardless, if she thinks I'm gonna play along and wait for a prince, then she's got another thing coming. Who am I talking to? Maleficus wasn't too far away from the castle, watching it unfold with a devilish grin on her face. She was, of course, aware of Flority's alteration of her curse, but she had her own plans to fix that. What started with a seed can end with a seed. Or seeds. Whatever, the pun still works. Maleficus said, producing a bag of small black seeds and spreading them around Apollora's castle. Almost immediately, the seeds took root and grew into thick, strong black vines with blue spikes. They engulfed the outer castle walls and entrances and continued growing in and over the castle itself effectively trapping the ponies inside. Hey! Maleficent sharply turned around to see Prince Artie flying towards her, enraged. No pony ties me up and gets away with it! What have you done with Apollora? See for yourself, little Pegasus, for my curse has been fulfilled. You'll never get to Apollora or her friends! <laughs> it's so much fun to play the bad guy! What a bet! I live for a challenge! Your vines and spells can't keep me away from my truest love! Truest love? Uh, you mean, even more than that mermaid you met back when your name was Dashy? Didn't she turn into a pegasus in the end, so you two could be together? Oh, her? You try spending five minutes in the same room with that mare. She's way too uh, energetic. Sometimes just downright crazy. She has this really nasally annoying voice, too. I liked her better when she couldn't talk. You know, now that I think about it, you kind of sound like her. Are you two related or something? <laughs> Energetic? <laughs> annoying? Crazy? <laughs> You're gonna regret those words because they will be your last! She utilized the changeling power that apparently came with her villainous position and turned herself into a giant, pink, fire-breathing dragon. Hurt and enraged by the prince's words, she attacked, breathing fire in his direction and swiping at him with her claws. The prince smirked and drew his sword, ready to counter her attacks. A dragon? Ha! Finally a challenge worthy of a prince like me! Maleficus's tail slammed into Prince Artie while he was monologuing, sending him speeding through the air backwards and directly into the ground, instantly knocking him out cold. Hey, Maleficus! Forget some pony? Apollora shouted, spinning a lasso in the air that was made out of the still-growing vines surrounding the castle. She galloped towards the dragon. Taking advantage of Maleficus's momentary state of shock, Apollora tossed the lasso around Maleficus's neck with a hearty, Yee-haw, you big mean critter! Maleficus roared in anger. 
pulling at the vine around her neck with her mighty claws and finding it more difficult to break than she had realized. Already the vine had grown to double its strength and it wasn't showing signs of stopping. That's for turning me into all kinds of crazy things in your stories. A wolf, a pig, a monkey, and a clock? Apollora quickly grabbed a hold of another vine and raced around an apple tree to pull it tight. As Maleficent struggled to get her neck free, she wasn't watching where she was stepping and tripped over the vine, causing her to tumble into one of the castle towers. That's for making me the fairy apple mother in Cindershine. You gave me that dress knowing full well I wouldn't like it. Maleficent continued to roar in anger and confusion. She was trapped by the vines growing around the castle, caught by her own evil spell. Apollora spied Prince Artie's sword on the ground near where he had fallen, so she quickly picked it up and faced Maleficent. And this? This is for your worst deed of all. Trying to make me sleep so R.D. would have to kiss me to wake up! Apollora reared up on her hind legs and tossed the sword directly at the dragon's chest. Maleficent's eyes narrowed, knowing there was no way she could stop it. And at the last moment before the sword struck her chest, she... Changed back from a pink dragon into a green and black one? What the... Oh yeah, that! I wanted to be the villain, but I didn't want to do the whole death thing, so I swapped back. It was super fun while it lasted, though. I almost believed that AJ was really mad at me. She's such a good actress. Isn't that cheating? Uh, are you saying that you would want to see me die? Well, no, but... Don't you usually just capture the villain or reform them or something? Normally, yeah. But I think I might have made AJ a little too angry. Besides, it's just a story. Christy will be back to causing havoc and mayhem in Equestria in no time. Okay, if you say so. Maleficent was vanquished and her massive dragon body dissolved, leaving nothing behind but Ardy's sword. Because her magic had a hand in creating the Black Vines, they disappeared as well, leaving only Floridy's sleeping spell intact. Ugh, what? What happened? Huh? I, I did it? I vanquished the dragon! Oh, yeah! Artie said. She took off in a victory flight and only paused when she saw Apollora nearby. Oh my gosh! She must be sleepwalking! Don't worry, my sweet, for I will break this curse just as I have rid this kingdom of Maleficent. Whoa there, R.D. That won't be necessary. Whoa! And she sleep talks too? She's dreaming about me! Huh. How adorably predictable. R.D. said, cornering Apollora against the castle wall with nowhere to run from her impending kiss. Uh, uh, wait, R.D. I think your first kiss worked just fine. First kiss? Yeah, uh, you vanquished the dragon, and then you, uh, found me sleeping up in that tower, uh, and, uh, kissed me to break the spell. Then you, uh, came back down here, and one of the loose bricks from the tower over there hit you on the head, and you passed out. Yep. Oh, well, that explains it. So why isn't every pony else awake? Artie said, noting that the other ponies in the courtyard were all still fast asleep. Because you... Have to kiss the pony who created the sleeping spell, Floridy. But, uh, uh, just on the cheek works fine, I'm sure. All right, let's go! Artie said, zooming away towards Apollora's room. Once in the tower, Apollora finally realized why the dragon had changed colors moments before it was vanquished. Mary Pie was a pink pony again, back in the role she should have had all along. She was pretending to be asleep on the floor, but Apollora knew better. Kissing Floridy on the cheek should break her sleeping spell since she was the one who created it. Yeah, I know, I get it. We just talked about it outside. Just making sure every pony knew how this should work. Apollora said, spying Mary Pie secretly winking in her direction. Artie planted a small peck on Floridy's cheek, and the spell started reversing itself, waking the sleeping ponies in the castle. Oh, Apollora, you're all right. Faunishai said, rubbing her eyes. Thank goodness. Hey, why isn't that third pony awake yet? Artie asked, pointing to Mary Pie, who was still asleep, supposedly. Apollora was confused for a moment. Then the realization hit her. I think Mary Pie needs a kiss, too. Oh, okay. Artie said, and without a moment's hesitation, she gave Mary Pie a peck on the cheek. <coughs> Mary Pie bounced up from the floor joyously. 
true love's kiss in here after all. And I didn't even have to be the princess this time. The end. I'm sure there was another page in there about tying up loose ends and Applelora seeing her parents again. But there was a chance that RD was going to declare his love for somepony else and I wasn't about to let that happen. Oh, hey, I just realized the only pony who didn't slumber in that whole story was Applejack. Remember, because in one scene, Artie was taking a nap in the tree and then Florty's spell got everyone else later? Looks like the cake twins might still be under that spell. <laughs> See you all next time.